YouTube, we can do all those things. So what I like to do is you just start the camera recording. Just relax. Just relax, get into the hole, you know, da 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 da. The camera does pick up over there. Okay. That little, so, so that at least I know where I'm looking. So if you want to know where to look, either look there or you can just look at yourself. I don't know. It's easiest that way, yeah? I don't know what it is, the whole things. Now also one thing is I do normally stuff up the intro like a lot. So I normally record my intros like 10, 20 times. Really? Okay. What so is the intro though? The intro is just normally like, hey, I'm MJ. And this is what this video is going to be <laughs> Where about. Where did you put that like 20 times? So I, I like sometimes do that 20 times. And then once I find I get the recording, like the intro done, okay. the rest just follows through. Fair enough. So this I'm, would actually make a cool intro. Would, right? would this make a cool intro? So yeah. Should we keep this intro? Because I'm thinking of calling, because you know, you need to have a good title. People don't click unless you have a good title. Yeah. So I'm thinking of calling this, you know, our, our little interview with Yuri, top student who wants to leave Ooh. actuarial science. Not, not top, but pretty. One of the top. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's one of the top. Basically. One of the top. Fair so, so, so that's, that's the big question, but we don't open with that question. We, we, of course. We first start with some smaller questions, let people wait for that. Yeah, okay. So, so we, we start with, I guess, yeah, we can use this as the intro. And we can go straight into the nice warm up question, okay. which I'm sure you've been asked a lot, and that is why did you study actuarial science? Okay, uh, so why I studied actuarial science is so when I was at school, I was kind of very bored with everything, and it was mainly okay, it's, I don't want to seem narcissistic, but it was because it's quite easy. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of students who end up studying actuarial science would feel that at school, though. It's like everything is just come and go and you just sit and do your thing but everyone was telling me like actual science is going to be really tough and i was i was actually up for that challenge i just wanted to see and experience what it's all about what okay. everyone was talking about yeah because they, they, they normally say that there's three reasons why most people study actual science yeah either for the money either it's because like the biggest one yeah the money uh, they call it the three M's. It's it's money, my uncle, it's like some family member <laughs> has studied okay. actuarial science and therefore is told to you, or because you're good at maths. Like yeah. it's one of those three things that people get told. Hey, have you heard of actuarial science? Yeah. And then I mean, because when you heard of actuarial science originally, like at school, did you actually know what it was going to be about? Not, not a clue. No idea. I didn't like the only thing I heard was the maths thing. The like, maths. The third one, yeah. That's it. And like, yeah. And then you just took it from there. I know. I, I remember someone telling me like it's super, super difficult, and I was like, you know, I'm up for the challenge. But then having nightmares, like I had nightmares <laughs> going into bits, being like, I'm gonna study something. They're gonna say stuff, and I'm not gonna understand it at all. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna look like a laughing stuff. Did you ever have those nightmares? Uh, I didn't have the nightmares going in. Uh, but let's say after like a week or two, I just felt like everyone was way more intelligent than me and it started like building up this like kind of fear thing, but at least like I like sat down relaxed and like started working harder mm -hmm. instead of like a lot of people what they do is they get that type of fear and then they just give up. Yes. Where you need to keep going, you need to push. You know? well, well, it, I don't know, actual science for me was a bit like that show Survivor. It was like, you know, you start off this big yeah. group, everyone's happy. <laughs> But once a week, someone leaves. Like, and it's, yeah. it's like a domino thing. One person leaves and then everyone's like, well, I also want to leave. Also, and and you always like, the thing is, it's, it's quite noticeable. Like yes. when someone just disappears, but they, they never say anything. That's yeah. the thing. It's They're just, just like, gone. You go, you go to class, you're like, where's Carlos? What, what happened to Carlos? Guys, is he sick? Yeah. He hasn't been here for and a just whole Just now you're on like a break in the cafeteria or and something. And there's Carlos there with is. all these accounting friends and he's like, hey guys, it's so much better. I can yeah. go out now and, and all that type of stuff. Thursday, Joel's at Tin Roof. Yeah. Because I mean, this, this is the thing. I did, I did stalk your Facebook profile before you came on to get a, to get a, feel, get a feel for, for you. And the one thing I did notice is that you like to party a lot. Okay. I saw, I don't know if this is just because of all the New Year's and the whole December thing. Yeah, fair enough. But... I see you like to get out. I do, I do. While you were studying at Chiro Science, did you have time for that? Um, uh, no, not really. But it, it depends. Like, you can make time for it if you really want to. But like, when you're studying there, it's, like, it's very intensive. You like, mostly work on the weekends. Mm -hmm. But like, what we did is, my friends and I would just meet up, let's say, every Friday and have some drinks or something. It's not like a party party. 
And then I think we kind of just faded into that. So now I, I like to go out, but I don't like to party. I like to just have a beer with a friend or like just relax. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you weren't like some of the students who were like hitting the clubs Monday, Tuesday, oh, no. Wednesday night until two in the morning, then yeah. writing the exam on Thursday. <laughs> no, I've gotten I've gotten completely over clubs. I don't. That's I like. If I go anywhere, I'll go to a bar. Okay, I'm done now. Because I mean, you you did well at it, sure science. I mean, I was looking also on Facebook, eighty six point seventeen percent. Yeah. I mean, that's. that's uh, is, was that not the highest mark? Did someone get um, higher than that? So there are a few students that are better than me. I'm not sure if they taking their degree now or carrying on and doing the honors. Mm -hmm. So it might have been the highest mark out, out of those who's taking their BCom and changing. Okay. Yeah. But there are a few students that I can think of that are a bit better than me. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because this is the thing at, at UCT, it is, it's a four year undergrad and then it's a additional fifth year as honors. No, it's three year undergrad. Three year four undergrad. Four year for the honors. Four year for the honors. Okay, that's the same then as, as work. So you've yeah. done three years now. I've done three years, yeah. Done three years. And then of all of those things that you were doing, what did you find is to be the hardest? Like what was, what did you look at and you're like, oh my gosh, this is insane. Are we talking content wise or writing exams? Or? Any, any part of the actual science degree. Like what, what did you find to be the most challenging? Um, in terms of content, either, let's say, maths and stats would kill in terms of difficulty, but their exams are reasonable mm -hmm. most of the time. Sometimes it can be quite, um, I don't know, quite challenging, quite different. But in, and then the actual AXI courses, the content is not difficult, mm -hmm. but those exams are death. <laughs> Straight up from first, second to the... F and there's people popping, panic pills, there's crying, there's, and then afterwards, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a disaster. Like, mm -hmm. hurricane comes in, swoops, takes out everything in its path. Even the top students, like, everyone is just after that exam or test. It's just, no. Did you, did you ever fail an exam? Oh, no. You never failed an exam? I never failed. I never, I failed, like, a tough test. That's about it. I okay. Didn't fail a test, nothing. So you didn't fail like a whole subject, you just flip and yeah. got everything. So you could have gone out more. I, yeah, I could, could have. have. I maybe you wasted could. a slight bit of time. But so, um, yeah, like I wanted to do really well. So that was my end goal. Not, okay. Yeah, I didn't need to go out anymore. So. And now, now it's time for the big question or the whole reason why, or yeah, the title of the video. Okay. okay. And that is why, because you're doing so well, are you leaving actuarial science? Um, so I saw yesterday actually your joke video on, or actually a few of your videos where you talk, actually the actuarial science has haters video. Oh, you saw that? one, okay. Uh, where you spoke about like, it's just not for someone, mm -hmm. but normally that refers to someone like who, who fails or does badly and then they decide to leave and they always say that. Mm -hmm. But even though I did well, like I actually do think actual science just isn't for me. Okay. And like I finished, I like I wanted to finish my degree at least, and then move on to what I actually want to do. Um, I'm still planning to work kind of in the industry, but maybe not as an actuary. Maybe um, like quantitative finance. Okay. But I want to go more into the intensive side of it. So what I'm planning to do is do a mathematics honors, mm -hmm. pure maths. Uh, learn like all the, the maths behind everything and then after that maybe do an MPhil in mathematical finance mm -hmm. and then yeah so I want to so the reason I want to learn the maths behind it is because when I go into the industry I kind of want to have the option to if I get an idea be able to implement something new mm -hmm. um, yeah because like I don't know I want to live more of an intensive lifestyle I guess okay. like something more interesting not the standard okay this is what we're doing type thing yeah and, and you don't think that like by studying actuarial science to completion, I mean, because at the stage you're at, you've still got, have you done CA1? I don't know the codes. CA1 is actuarial risk management. No, did not do that one. Did not do that one. Yeah, that's the next year's one. Because that one, what, what is, what makes that one interesting is yeah. they talk a lot about regulation. And I know regulation sounds boring. It's the rules. People are like, why oh, do I have to learn this? And a lot of the documents are convoluted. Okay. But what it does is, if you understand the regulations very well, along with the mathematics, 
Not that you can pick up loopholes, but you yeah. can maybe create a product that's more efficient than anybody else. Because this is the, the one thing, is that you could be like incredibly good at maths, do this amazing product, and then the regulator's like, oh, oh, we don't allow, we don't allow that. Yeah, we yeah. don't allow that. And then it's like, but, but why don't you allow that? And, and the one chunk of actuarial science that I think a lot of people don't like, enjoy or appreciate is building on the judgment or the understanding of where these regulations come from. But I know it's not a popular subject because it's not mathematical. Yeah, but it's, so, it's fine. Like, thing is, I'm still a team player, so I'll still work with other people who know the regulations or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I was just thinking, so I know actuarial science uh, has broader fields or whatever, mm -hmm. but what I want to do is I want to go more the mathematics routes, like the more the, let's say, asset pricing or um, trading, like you can do that through Axi, but I want to do the maths behind it. I don't, I'm not here for, let's say, to make a lot of money or mm -hmm. I just want to have, like, I want to have fun doing what I do. And I didn't really, I didn't like maths when I came into Vossi, like I was good at it. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, not liking is maybe a wrong statement. Like I didn't enjoy it. Like okay. I was good at it and like, I liked that I was good at it. That's about it. And then adversity like the challenge was there it was real and then actually like i just like fell in love with maths like just pure mathematics and it's like it's a whole different concept to everything else like actual science is like more manipulation of things you already know mm -hmm. whereas pure maths is it's that mind-boggling thing when you look at something that's obviously true mm -hmm. but it's false and and then working with those things and seeing why it's actually the other way around and then it becomes obvious that it's false yes yeah it's, it's just did, did it's you, like magic in some sense did you guys do like basic analysis yes that subject we did it in second year i did not understand that at all really like, like did, did you get your head around that <laughs> yes yes that's why i went so like when i did my degree i did third year maths on top of it okay. like as an extra major and then you take that basic analysis and you go into real analysis like not real analysis is an ra um but like analysis metric spaces mm -hmm. topics and analysis working with convergence in different spaces well this thing I, because we, we had basic analysis and we had advanced analysis advanced analysis was very easy for me to understand i got it that was cool but basic analysis those <laughs> proofs i was like that's that's where I'm at. I like those. To me, it feels like this is this is another language. Like, what on earth that's, is going on? It is another language. That's the thing. So, and that's what I wrap your head around that. I, I like the more the financial, the economic subjects of okay. actuarial science, just because, like, it made sense. You know, you no. like. I mean, uh, the moment generating function. Okay, that's the thing in statistics. Okay. To me, that still baffles me. Like, I don't know about you, but really? when, when you when you look at that moment generating function, like. I actually went last year and I was like, I want to figure out how did they come up with this. So I found the guy who created the, the forerunner of it, okay? okay. Um, I think well, I'm probably going to get his name wrong. It's like Abraham Mez, no, I'm, I'm getting the name wrong. I'll put it in the description of the video. Awesome. But he was a friend of Isaac Newton and Edmund nice. Haley, the comic guy. Okay. And he had a book where he wrote down the result. But he doesn't write down how he got to it. Oh, so after this whole thing of trying to find out, okay, how did he get to this thing? He didn't really get to it. He didn't really get to it. And then, like, on, on Reddit, there was this little trail that went down to, it was called Harmony Maths. And I was like, what? I mean, <laughs> have you ever heard of Harmony Maths? No. And they said, that is where the moment generating function comes in or something like that. So... Yeah. So that, that's what for me. Did I you read about how many maths did you look at? I did. It went, went over my head. Okay. Went over my head. Like you know, like like it was here, and like I'm still like over here. So I'm hoping. Yeah, maybe in it, time. it might actually be like a physics concept. A lot of things in statistics actually well, like statistics and physics kind of like share a lot of similarities, and okay. often like a lot of statistics is used in physics and. I guess some physics concepts is used in statistics, but mm -hmm. maybe not straight physics. But yeah, so I think they work with like stochastic differential equations in physics and stuff okay. like that. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, in physics, you're dealing a lot with forces and in mm. actual science, you've got the force of mortality and, you know, all these other force of interest yeah. and, and how they all apply and stuff. So 
Okay, so then what would be your dream job? Like if, if I came up to you and I said, oh. you can work anywhere in the economy or you can have any job you want, where do you want to go work? Oh, that's quite a tough question. Like, do you like, want to work for like a big company that's yeah, got everything at fingertips or think, a little company where you steer the ship? I kind of like, I, I want to work for a big company, mm-hmm. like maybe overseas somewhere, like London, overseas. like London or America, just for the, 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 like the really big bank type things. That's okay. all. It's not like I'll, I'll still work here okay, as so long as I can, or as long as I'm here until I get something somewhere else. Maybe I'll even stay here. Like we never know, mm-hmm. but like the, the goal is to just work for like a big company, but I, also, I guess the like the steering the ship thing, but maybe if you get good enough in a company like that, you eventually get to, you know, control things or even like even it's okay to work underneath someone. Mm-hmm. As and I think in the big companies, they're actually more um, they they big because they're innovative and they'll kind of they will hold some reins on you to keep you maybe a little bit in place, mm-hmm. but they will still let you run with your ideas and and the people in a big company like the people above you will at least know what you're talking about and maybe if you've done something wrong they can adjust and you can learn more like that okay working for a small company and like running your like everything in let's say that your department if you're the head um then you're on top then you know you can't you can't go anywhere from there in some sense like where what are you going to learn unless you're just looking at the internet and i guess at a high enough level there's nothing on the internet anymore Mm -hmm. yeah Okay, so, so you've never had that entrepreneurial, like, I want to go and make the, like a new discovery or make a new actuarial startup that Not revolutionizes really. the world? All, all my things are, like, all my dreams are just based on me being happy and doing, they say, I don't mind being in an office as long as I get to just bang out maths all day. Okay. Yeah. Well, then the office, you've got to deal with office politics. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. You know, you know, you got to you got to make sure that you greet the secretary in a nice way. You got to make sure that you know you align her on your team. You got to make sure that you know the boss is happy with you. You know, she, you have to bake her cookies every now and then. There, there is that that office yeah, yeah. office thing, um, which I mean, because you know, I I work for fourteen months in an office, and I hated it. I hated I hated the. The, the office dynamics and I mean this yeah. is it was a young company it was young it was a cool startup vibe everyone was supposed to be chill everyone yeah it seems like it and it is for the first six months first six months is great and then <laughs> dealing with the same people you kind of you, le- you learn like a lot about the people you work with yeah, maybe a little bit too much a little bit too much a little bit too much so it's the same like me I'm sure it happened when you were studying for the people who remain, though. For the people who remain, but yes. you know, unfortunately, at, and while well, you were studying, the people kept dropping out, and I don't know if it was also oh, like with you, you kept getting the new people from the year above yes, that yes. then just were repeating. Some people, man. So at least, at least it was a good, it was a good mix, good mix. Yeah, it's, it's, it ends up you you think like okay, oh, first year to second year, it's actually a drop because mm-hmm. you don't pick up many people in second year. You pick up some, but mm-hmm. then that. Second to third year, where you think, okay, the numbers haven't changed, but you get to class and there's like this half it's, half, it's and you're like, like well, what's people? going on? People, all these new people. So, like that guy's never been to class before. Yeah, yeah but it's, he, he looks old. So, <laughs> I would say that was that was the one thing that like freaked me out because I took like quite a few attempts to get my fellowship exam. Yes. And every time I would go to write the exam, there'd be this really old guy behind me and he had like grey hair oh, and everything. No. Like the, all the times I went to write the same exam, the same guys behind me and I was like, am I, is that, is that like me? <laughs> is that your life? Am now? I going to be stuck in these exams? And I think that gave me the motivation. That gave me the motivation yeah. to just say, hold on, let me push really hard, get this thing done and done. You can't, you can't be stuck in that, and like then, it's a loophole. Because that's the thing, is the, the actual exams, they start getting to you. Like you become like, like almost like, a, like, I, like I you know, I'm like addicted to studying. <laughs> I'm so used to these actual exams yeah. that I feel guilty if I go a day without studying. Even like holiday, December period that we just had. I was like, if I but do what not... What were you studying? So I've, I've gone into, like my latest thing has been mythology. Okay, so just like anything. Anything. Now. It just has to be, it okay. can be anything. So I was been reading up on Greek mythology. I was reading, like, so you see, see these books over here? Yeah, like when I came in, I was looking at them. So, so you can see, we've got the religion one, the movie one, the art one, sociology. I mean, 
the history. I wasn't even going to read sociology, but I was like, I needed to complete the collection. Yeah, and then you read it. I read it and I loved it. Oh, I loved it. And then there's history, then there's Sherlock Holmes, and there's literature, and then I've got another whole bunch on the, the ebook format, like oh, science. Uh, astronomy is pretty good. You'd actually, you'd love astronomy. Maybe it's, I'll check it out. The history of astronomy is like the history of mathematics. Nice. Like you see all the big guys um, that did like big mathematical things, did it so that they could try to help astronomers know where Mars was. So that was a really cool one. Um, the science one was a bit heavy for me. Uh, politics one was great. Love that one. Really? Uh, I, wouldn't li- I don't think I'd like politics. Philosophy, psychology, like all of these things are, because I don't know, I've got this, I've got, like I said, I've got this addiction to say, I need to, I need to keep learning. Yeah. So, but fortunately, I mean, that's actually probably also what happened to me though. Like the, the realization that the field of maths is just so, it is huge. It's way too big. And it doesn't, even if someone has to study every day, all day, mm-hmm. the rest of their life, they not even get, maybe not even cl- like 10% down. Yep. So that's, it's just that, you know. So what, what would you say is your, your favorite part of mathematics? Like what mm-hmm. section of mathematics? Like if analysis. I said to you, so analysis, <laughs> analysis that's said, yeah. That's your nightmare. The, the analysis proofs, that type of stuff. But like, yeah, I don't know. It's, I think because I like statistics as well a lot, mm-hmm. but I like the probability theory, which is also just like measure theory, mm-hmm. that type of stuff, which is pure maths analysis side. I think all of that stuff just comes to me. Like, that's what I want. It's just, okay. it's nice to work with small epsilons and okay. deltas. And, it's, it's my thing. And, and, and third year maths, I mean, I know cryptography is part of the course in third year maths. Uh, it's, I think cryptography is in fourth year, yeah. Is that, is that fourth year at UCT? It, yeah, it looks like it. Okay, so you didn't cover any of that stuff? No, I did not. I was going to say, because, I mean, that must, that's quite a popular form of mathematics now, the whole rise of cryptocurrency yeah. I think I might, that. I might consider doing it this year that's coming. Because yeah. what is your view of Bitcoin like? Have you been, like, looking at it from a mathematical side, like, is it something that excites you, or are you like, I have no time for this nerd currency? Like, it, it's exciting, but I haven't spent any time looking at any of it, yeah. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't give you a rundown on anything. Right now. And then, I guess this is sort of linked, but programming. Have you, have you taken any liking to programming? I, lo- I love programming, yeah. And what, what languages do you program in? Um... I haven't programmed in a while, but mm-hmm. so at Varsity we do like Python and Java. Okay. Like, well, they do Python in Axi, and then I did one extra course which did some Java. Okay. And then I kind of got into it, but I only learned like the basics, like basic basics of like HTML and JavaScript. And like, I don't know, I wasn't, I like, I enjoy Java because like, I was making like I made like an app or something, not not published app or anything. Just what, for what, fun. What, what did the app do? Like it was it was also just for the course we did. I like I made a hangman game. It was easy. Okay. Like, but like I built in some like cheat codes and stuff like <laughs> that. And what what hangman game has cheat codes? It was okay. cool though. Like I put my own face on the hangman. Like I don't know. I was just having fun. That's all. Like I think that's what that's cool about programming. But then like, I guess I got more into like the sisters like statistics and stuff so like are like it's it's pretty decent because it's like you, checking out the integration stuff have you ever thought of creating your own artificial intelligence i thought of it but then i wasn't didn't get that far into programming but it would be really cool if you to be if, if you were to create your own ai what would you want your ai to do yo i don't know like if i like if I had to think of an AI that should be created, it should okay, be like about that, yeah. the ultimate human in some sense. Like, you know, they always do that, like, we're going to make a human AI, mm-hmm. like robot type thing, but like, like almost human-like, exactly, but just hyper-intelligent, like that recall from internet and do anything. I don't know, it would, be, it would just be pretty interesting to have around. Okay. Might irritate people, like, if... If you don't know it's a robot, mm-hmm. then it's just going to be some arrogant asshole <laughs> that studies AXA. Because <laughs> <laughs> if let's say let's say you make this the supercomputer human, what would you give it any rules? Like, would you say 
don't kill other humans or yeah, what what would you slide, what know. would you give it because i mean a lot of or maybe just don't kill me just don't kill you maybe so you can know. kill everyone because that's the thing a lot of a lot of the times ai needs to be goal orientated yeah in order to to learn in order to create pathways you know what's the most efficient way to get to that what would you give this super ai's goal like what would its ultimate goal be yeah hmm okay that actually just I have no idea. <laughs> like, would it be reducing suffering? Would it be creating art? I, I don't know, a lot of people, they, they create... <laughs> That's actually pretty cool, though. That's they, a they cool make, idea, but... Uh, they make, yeah, they make the AI, make some art, and then they can... Yeah, just get rid of all the artists that already no, don't make yeah. that much. Yeah. Post on Instagram, like yeah, you. <laughs> you can automate you, MJ. <laughs> well, this is the thing. I mean, I, I look at art, and in a weird way, you... You can automate, like even not because I know a lot of AI does abstract art. Okay. But you you can get AI in the sense that you get a picture, you get some Fibonacci, you know, like the nice rule ratios, yeah. um, certain images. It can try different colors. It can put it online, let's say on an Instagram page. If it doesn't get enough likes, it deletes it, tries something else, puts it back up. It gets more likes, learn it and, and it like can actually see what the ultimate art yeah. form or something. They can create yeah. pretty art based on actual users' feedback. Well, what about a, a meme robot? A meme robot? Imagine the ultimate memes. Well, let's think, because <laughs> how, how is your meme channel doing? Uh, it's slow. It's only, I think it's got like 300. That's pretty good. Followers, you know? we, we're going we're gonna to put a link in the description below to, to Yuri's meme. It's just on Instagram. Or do you yeah, yeah it's, it? it's only on Instagram, yeah. It's only on Instagram, so you guys must definitely follow Meme four thousand W. Meme four thousand W. Yeah. What does the W stand for? It's so we we since we're running it through UCT, we did it on like a a play on the course codes there. So okay. like, it is uh, advanced mathematics memes. Okay. And we played it advanced on advanced mathematics memes. Okay. Yeah. So we we played it on the Mam four thousand W or like that type of thing. So the W in the course codes of UCT stands for whole year course. Uh, and okay. so, but we did, so meme four letters, so it doesn't conflict actually with any things in the UCT course codes, because those always stand at three letters, four numbers, and then the ending, yeah. Okay. But now, aren't you then restricting your market just to UCT? Uh, no, we've got, we've got quite, I think we've got a few international people, like okay. people from your know, everywhere actually. You can, actually, you can look on when you have a business account you can actually look where your people are from okay and you not, say not we. details about specific people just like Who, who's the we okay so like at the moment i've been running the page yeah um we were trying to make a like we were trying to make like an organization type thing where we have like meetings at uct and, and teach people maths but using memes as a medium okay. so it's it's me, my uh, friend Kushal. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have two people, um, Logan and Paul, mm -hmm. who do like more of the admin side. But we haven't done, we haven't actually done anything towards an organization yet. So at the moment, we've just got the meme page. I just say we because we still, we yeah. still are a group until we decide. Okay, we're only going to use the meme. And, page and do you, you know. would you accept like say submission? So let's say someone's watching this now and they love advanced maths and they're good at generating memes yeah. and they sent you some. Would Actually, you... the, the latest post that I posted at like nine this morning was a submission from someone else, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you guys, you guys can hear that. If you make a meme, you can send it to this guy. So would this, would this t-shirt count as a meme? Yeah, that's actually, a, that's, that's a pretty good one as well. So, pretty... so what we do is, um, uh, the page is not just maths memes though. We, we trying to do it in an educational way. So okay. I guess you could, if you have maths memes, it might still, it might be really funny, but it might not end up on our channel though. Okay. Because what we want is a maths meme that has something in it that we can explain as well. So this one would actually qualify because then we'd be able to explain, explain what a bar is. What a bar is yeah. and, and everything. And like we that. are, we trying to do like, different things so like financial axi stats actual mathematics but it's it's quite a lot easier just finding pure maths memes okay. so at the moment a lot of it's clogged in that yes but they are i think there's two or three axi ones um 
Okay, there's, there might be some physics ones. <laughs> I don't think I get the physics. <laughs> I don't think it's the fine. There's, there's explanations though. You don't have to get it. It could. I think. Yeah. Just check it out and then you'll see. Okay. Well, I think we are coming up to thirty minutes. We have thirty seconds. Two, one, boom. We have hit the thirty second. Thirty second. Thirty, 30 minutes. minutes mark. Um, so I think that's a, a good place to end. Unless you want to uh, say anything else, you're all good. good. Okay, cool. Thanks guys so much for watching and like I said, don't forget to check out the meme page and to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Keep up. Cheers.